Welcome to the channel, guys. We are on 437, and today we're going to be talking about Patrick Corbin signing a six year, $140 million deal with the Washington Nationals. Now, it came to a surprise for some people, for others, they kind of knew where this was going to go. The Yankees ended up giving five, Washington gave six. There were reports that, they, that he wanted a six year deal, not a five year deal, kind of like Craig Kimbrell. But, you know, he ended up signing with who he signed with. And the Washington Nationals now have a guy in the top of the rotation that, well, <laughs> It, it, it's a good top three if you think about it. All three guys making over a hundred million dollars for sure, but all three guys went on can be really, really good. Now, to me, the the Washington Nationals saw the two moves in their division and they saw that they had to improve. Now, Cano Diaz to the Mets, Segura to the Phillies. They saw those moves and they saw you know what we can't let Philly and we can't let the Mets get in front. Of us in this division if they do it's going to be really really bad and they went out there and they signed the best starter out there in, in, in this free agency they really did now some people can debate that the contract you know is a bit too much for corbin six years for 140 million is a lot for a guy that really only had one great season or one above average season which is true i mean corbin's had decent seasons but he never had the season that he had last year up until last year obviously but the thing is, is that I believe Corbin can get better. I believe that Corbin is a complete pitcher and that he can use the stuff that he has to be good in the game of baseball. Or in the game, not just the game of baseball, but within that division and within that, the expectations of that contract. And I personally believe that Corbin is ready for it. You look at what he, you look at what he brings, what he represents. He represents to me toughness. When you look at just the mentality that he had when he said he would, you know, love to play New York. He wasn't afraid of wanting to play in that big market. And he was saying, you know, I'm going to bring everything I got to this. And I believe him. You know, I truly believe him. I believe that he can do a lot. When you look at his year last year, one point, uh, 3.15 ERA, he went 200 innings, which is what they need in that rotation, especially since Strasburg uh, tends to get hurt every year. And on top of that, 246 strikeouts. Strike up for nines of 11. Walks was at 48. All that stuff is great. You want to see that in Patrick Orban. You want to see him improve upon those numbers, especially if he can improve upon the strikeouts or get you even close to what he gave you in strikeouts. Same with innings, which I believe he's going to give them. But he has all of it. I think he has everything you need to say he's going to be a good left-handed pitcher. Now, where does it leave the free agent market? It leaves the free agent market in somewhat of a frenzy. In the sense that I believe Nathan Navaldi is going to get more money now because of this deal. Because of the success of his postseason run. And it kind of helps Keiko and it kind of helps some of those lower tier guys. Because now with him being out so early in the you know offseason, teams are going to still be in need of pitching. Now the Yankees are in need of pitching, left-handed pitching. They could go Keiko or they can go via trade. You look at... Teams like the Reds, they say they want to get in on pitching. Philly wants to get in on pitching. Philly can also sign a Dallas Keiko or whoever else they want to go out there, whether it's Keiko, Hap. You know, they, they can do a whole bunch of things as well. A bunch of teams can go out there and do a whole bunch of things. But it frees up the market for pitchers at least. And on top of that, I think it's going to help some of these position players that are out here in the market decide where they want to go. And that's important. That really is important. But the other thing I want to get to here is... And I'm going to go back to Corbin and the National League East. That top three can go up against any top three in that division. Mets included. They're obviously better than the Phillies top three. They may be better than, to be honest with you, they may be better than the Braves top three. And the Mets are the ones that you have to look at when it comes to their top three. Are they better than the Mets? Now, Scherzer, I, I'll take Scherzer against anybody any day of the week. I mean, that's a that's a marquee matchup. Strasburg, when he's on his game, can beat pretty much anybody as well. And I will take Patrick Corbin over Steven Matz any day of the week. Any day of the week. Trust me on that. I'll take that completely. But that doesn't mean that Steven Matz can't, you know, outperform him on any given night. But I just believe Corbin is better. So, it's an interesting time. The NLEs just got a whole lot better when it comes to just competition within their division. You now have four teams that all feel that they have a shot to win their division and are making plays in their division. And that's all you can ask for. That's really all you can ask for. So, I'm going to end it here, guys. 
If you guys liked the video, make sure to leave a like down below. Comment as well. Do you guys believe that Patrick Corbin helps the Washington Nationals and puts the Washington Nationals ahead of the Mets, Phillies, and maybe even Atlanta in that division? And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.